we're now beginning to understand that light is so very important beyond our ability to see. What the visual system does is grab light and in a sense forget it's seen it in a fraction of a second to build up an image of our world. Whereas what the biological clock needs is the detection of light over long periods of time. And what I couldn't quite reconcile in my mind is how can a sensory system, which is a transient, rapid on-off light detector, also be used as a way of regulating the clock. So the approach was to use mice with hereditary retinal disorders whereby the visual cells, the rods and cones, had degenerated naturally. And what turned out to be truly extraordinary is that these mice, lacking any visual responses, could regulate their clock perfectly normally. And at that point we realised, hang on, there's something really exciting here. The eye is the organ regulating the clock, but it may not be the rods and cones. And 10 years later, after lots and lots of studies, um, we were able to show that in fact it's not the rods and cones, but a third group of, of cells within the eye. And the cells within the eye that form the optic nerve are called the ganglion cells. And about one out of every hundred of those ganglion cells is directly light sensitive, hence the name photosensitive retinal ganglion cell, and it's those receptors that are grabbing dawn-dusk information and regulating the internal clock. This is what they look like. They form this beautiful sort of photosensitive net that, that encompasses the arc of the eye, and we can enlarge one of those cells uh, as illustrated here. And this is the photosensitive ganglion cell that's detecting light for the regulation of internal time. We're now trying to understand how light interacts with a master clock. We know there's a new receptor, but how does it actually change the clock? And what that's led to is ways in which we can fool the clock in thinking it's seen light. So why would we want to do that? Well, if you have no eyes, or if your eyes have experienced massive damage, you've lost the ability to set the clock to the external world. And so we've been working with Blind Veterans UK, and they will be the first clinical group that will try these new drugs, um, which will hopefully give back these extraordinary individuals a sense of time. I was chatting to one, one chap fairly recently. Uh, so this chap, you know, knows it's a Wednesday, um, and Wednesdays he cuts the grass. Uh, and he woke up, assumed it was morning, but it was 3 a.m. because, of course, his clock was drifting through time. This is an aquatic mint, in fact. So, glorious smell. How does the eye regulate the clock is now leading to the development of new drugs that will regulate the internal uh, clock of not only individuals who have profound eye loss, but also uh, patients, for example, with schizophrenia. Massive disruption uh, uh, of their sleep-wake profiles. And hopefully we can use these drugs to start to consolidate those individuals. And what's also turned out to be fascinating is there's a very interesting relationship between mental health and sleep-wake disruption. And some of the work we've been doing in Oxford has shown that if we can partially consolidate disrupted sleep-wake patterns, you can actually reduce the severity of symptoms of mental health conditions. And I think that's, that's turned out to be a very exciting area. So individuals exhibiting uh, severe depression were given a placebo, or they were given Prozac, or they were given light. And the light consisted of 30 minutes in the morning of around about 10,000 lux. And what that light did was reduce the severity of the depression much more effectively than the drugs. Now one of the problems, of course, is that as a society, we've moved from 1800, where we were all largely agricultural workers, in the UK, only about 1% of the population are now working in agriculture or the fisheries. So in a sense, um, with modernity, um, we've 
become cave dwellers again. And we've been cut away from that incredibly important light signal. Now, the problem that we have is that we don't precisely know what humans need in terms of their light exposure. We know we need quite a bit of it, but the colour can change. Um, the timing is incredibly important. What we've got to do is look at the ecology of human light exposure and match that to our sleep, our circadian rhythms, our mood, our performance, our reaction times, and all of those other parameters that make, the, make us the extraordinary creature that we are. And until we really do have those studies, it's going to be difficult for architects and, and, and lighting designers to, to, to genuinely mimic uh, and bring uh, outside light into internal spaces. In fact, quite a few architects in London have invited me to talk about light um, and the regulation of clocks and why these are important systems and how they might integrate this information into arch uh, architectural design. So yeah, those barriers are beginning to dissolve. One of the drawbacks, of course, is the contrast from a computer screen. So buildings have been designed which allow loads and loads of la natural light in. Um, but then people can't use their computer screens very effectively. And so they've then had to put up curtains. So it, we're learning. I think the biologists, the physiologists, you know, are, are learning about the importance and how light is interacting. Um, and that's being used by architects. But we haven't provided all the answers yet. Um, and, and when we do, we can hopefully then work very closely with architects. It's been very interesting with the press releases about the award, they've gone around the world and you know in my department, the Nuffield Department of Clinical Neuroscience, it's sort of flagged up the whole relationship between neuroscience and architecture in general. So I think that, that there's, there's a lot of opportunities for architects and, and people like myself uh, to work closely together and I think that's going to increasingly be the case as we go through uh, this decade.